G'day, so in the last video we created the centre ring here in the middle of our lamp. Next we're going to go ahead and create these four attachment fins which attach onto that centre ring and everything else attaches onto those parts. So from here, in our project we'll have something that looks like this right now. Now in order to go ahead and create those attachment fins we're going to need a new sketch. Alright, so we'll click on create sketch and this time we're going to do it on one of these two planes so either will be fine I think for mine I might pick that one alright you can still see the object that we had in there before and what we're going to need to do is go ahead and start drawing that fin now to do that we're going to pop down to our drawing here if we click on the second to last sheet here it is um, we can see all the dimensions we need for it now I realize it is on on side so you can um, swivel that if you'd like to, rotate the view, so I'll rotate clockwise, there we go and now you can see exactly the way it will look as you draw it. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do now. The very first step is to project a bit of geometry from the previous sketch which I know sounds like something quite odd but we're going to learn what that means so we're just going to click on sketch here we're going to click the project include and project and what we're projecting in this case is just this face here and that projects that onto our sketch, we'll click OK and now we'll move back to our view that we want so that's the inside of where our attachment fin is going to join in so looking at it here that's where this part here will join so that's where I'm going to draw out from I'm going to start by drawing all these little lines here and then we'll move on to doing the rest of it so I've got a little rectangle there which is 3 millimeters um, by 5 and then I've got 8.5 there, 8.5 below it. Across here by the look of it it is... Ooh, it's a bit of an odd dimension, we'll have to figure that one out in a little bit and it's 20 millimeters high. So we'll start drawing that in. So starting from my sketch, I've done so far circles and rectangles, this time we're going to use the line tool, uh, which is a little bit different. So I'm going to select my line tool, I'm going to go ahead and start drawing the shape I need to from this point here. So remembering that we have a little rectangle that's cut out in this particular sketch from this point and needs to be 5mm this way. Type that in again, 5 millimeters. Now we're going to press, I can press L on the keyboard if I would like the line tool again. I'm going to go up by 8.5. There we go. And enter again. It's up by 8.5. I'm going to go ahead and draw another line now. And this was that odd one that I don't quite know the dimension of yet, so I'll just pop it in for now and worry about the dimension later. I knew that this one coming down was 20 millimeters. So I'll just stop in half a sec and I'll show you what I mean by the point we're at here. So let's just go and look at the drawing. So what we've done so far is that line across the top there, this one up here and this one here and this one here. Next we've got to do that little one that goes down there and we've got to give a dimension to this part here. So back to Fusion. Click the L button again. Uh, we're going to come down here, across this way by 5 millimeters. Oops, 5 millimeters. Let's try that again. Yep. Um, and then down towards our, to match up with our 20 millimeters here, so another 8.5 millimeters down. There we go. So that's most of what we need so far. Alright, so you can obviously see we've got all that area there, plus what's in between. We'll just change our view to make sure this all looks right. Yep, that looks fine so far. Back to our view. So now we need to give that a dimension. We might come back to that and do that a little bit later. We'll start adding in some of the other lines. So I'm going to zoom right out now so that I can see more of what I'm doing. Now I want to add in two lines that go diagonally down from there and they need to be 10 millimeters apart. So let's add those in now. 
And I will probably add in this little one at the bottom here, at the bottom of the diagonal line. That one's important, so we'll do that in this step as well. So clicking back on my line tool, and go one diagonal line like that. Not too fussed about exactly how it works so far. Uh, click the L on the keyboard there, then click again. Come down towards, I don't know, about there is probably fine. And one more L, and I'm just going to do my next line here. Now, this time I've added them in without putting dimensions on them as I went, so I'm going to need to add those dimensions in now. So I hit the D key on the keyboard. I'm going to add the dimension between them. All right, make that 10 millimeters. You can see there that's messed up something a little bit here. So what you can see there is it's gone and tilted one of our lines because we didn't have what's called a constraint. So I'm going to select that line there, hold the control key on my keyboard, select the next line, right click, and I'm going to, going to make those perpendicular, which means they're at 90 degrees to each other. So there we go, that's all fixed now. Not too worried about the end of this line, I can move that back to where I need it to be. All right, I'm going to go and dimension this one now as well, make it 20 millimeters long. There we go, just as it said in the drawing. And the very last thing I'd like to do at this point is I've got this dimension of 105 millimeters, which is from the top of this part to the bottom here. So I'm gonna add that in as well. So hitting the D key on the keyboard for dimension, clicking that line, clicking that top line, and clicking out here, I'm going to give that a dimension of 105. So that's brought that into its correct position now. Next, I need to continue to work on these different parts and figure out different dimensions that are necessary throughout. Um, and some dimensions I'll put in later, some I'll put in earlier. By the way, the other way to get the dimension is up here. We've got the sketch dimension button. So back to here. So I've got my two lines here. I've got my 20 millimeters here. Next, I've got this, what looks like a very long line going all the way up to here. And I think I'm going to do this all in one go and then do another one parallel to it coming down. All right, so that I can get those two in straight away. So going back to my drawing here, hit the L key for the line. I'm going to come up, I'm going to zoom right out now. I'm going to come up to probably about there, I think we'll do. All right. And I did have another line that was parallel to it, so I'll click L, and I'm just going to do a line straight out, following that axis, and then down to about, so far we're parallel all the way along there, we'll just click there, that'll do. Now I haven't got any dimensions on it yet, so let's have a look at what dimensions we might need. So I've got one here, which is 300 millimeters from the very bottom there to the very top. So we'll do that one next. So hit the D key on the keyboard again. And hit that bottom line. Click on the top line and 300 millimeters. There we go. All right, so that's those. Now, I'm probably going to need to add my dimension between these two now as well. And, oops, let's try that again. There we go. Give that the dimension of 10 millimeters. That gives it the correct dimension. You can see they're parallel. I've got these little parallel lines here where those are what we call a constraint. So we had one of those earlier as well. Now, bringing this line down, if I pull on that end, I can actually bring it down quite close to this one down the bottom here. You can see it's kind of messing with the angle a little bit, but that's fine. And I need one little line between those two as well. There we go. So now I've got what looks like the entire fin there. Not quite complete yet, but it's pretty close. Now, I did have some odd dimensions on here, down the very bottom. So let's move it down a bit. There we go. Whoops. Wrong page. There we go. So I have 95.24 from the very corner here to that side line. So I'm going to add that dimension in now. So hitting the D key again, I'm going to select that point and then select the line and 95.24. There we go. So that's brought that out to its correct distance now. Let's have a look at what other ones we have on there. We have 81.89 from that point to that face 
to those lines there, so we'll do that too. So from that point, let's zoom in a bit so I can see each one of these. And I'll pop this one just in the middle. Oh, I can't add that one. There you go. Must be already accurate then. Okay. Now that we have done that, we need to go and double check that my angle is correct on this. So we'll go back to the plan here. And I've got a dimension of 42.5 from that point at that corner to the front point at this corner here. So let's say that again, it was 42.5. So I'm going to do that one now as well. Click L on my, uh, sorry, D on my keyboard for dimension. Click that point, click that point. And I'll bring it down, 42.5. All right, that's now in its correct position. And I've just got that little part there, which I don't think I have to dimension. We'll just have a look here. It is blue, so it tends to indicate that we don't have anything holding in its current position, so we'll add a little dimension to it between these two here of 10 millimeters. There we go. So that's almost complete. We just have those two little slots there and there. Or as you can see here, there and there. Now when we draw these ones, they have do have a specific dimension of 5 millimeters deep, 3 millimeters wide, and they're 15 millimeters up. So we can use the rectangle tool again for these. Uh, well, possibly the rectangle tool. Actually, we might use the line tool, I think. Change that. So L for line tool. I'm going to draw in my lines to start with. I'll just go that far in, that far down, and that far across. Oops. Try that again. So there. Now, I haven't dimensioned any of, any of this, so I'm going to hit the D key on the keyboard. Start with the top one there at 5 millimeters. This one here needs to be three millimeters. All right, and from the bottom line here to the bottom of my object, I need 15 millimeters. All right, so that's one of them. And before we continue, what we will do is just give it a little bit of a trim just to get rid of that part there. All right, click OK. So I right clicked there so I can click OK and get out of the trim tool. Now I'm gonna move up to the top and do the same thing. So L for line, click anywhere on that there, click, click, Ooh, click. Okay, so I've got my lines, hit the D key on the keyboard to dimension, five millimeters for this top one, three millimeters here, and that's all I need. Oh, and 15 millimeters from there to there. There we go. The very last thing is I'm going to use the trim tool again. So T for trim. I'm going to trim out that little section there. And click OK. All right. So there we go. We have the attachment fin all completed now. So like before, we are going to hit stop sketch, and then we're going to do our extrusion on it so that it becomes a solid object. So I'll hit the extrude button here. Select the profile, and you can see there I haven't quite got all of it, so I'm going to have to zoom right in and select that part there and that part there as well. And we're going to do our extrusion a little differently this time. We're going to select two sides. Sorry, not two sides, symmetric. And we want to do a distance of 1.5. That will give us a symmetric distance of 3 millimeters. And instead of join, we're going to go uh, new component as what happens after it extrudes is the operation that we're doing, we'll hit OK. All right, now we have a component made out of that part that we just made. So, now that we've done that, we'll select that component, give it the physical material like we had before, that oak white. Drag and drop it on, there we go. And we'll hit close. And the very last task we need to do with this component, well, two things, we need to rename it for starters and we'll call it attachment fin, attachment fin. All right, and now we need to do what is called a pattern. So we used pattern for these rectangles in here on the centering. We're now going to pattern this component. So we'll select the component itself. And now that we've got it selected, we're going to come up to the create, I believe it is. Yep, create. And we're going to click, uh, go down to pattern menu and circular pattern. 
We've selected the object, so we haven't selected the object yet. We'll call it uh, select components. We're going to select the object itself. Select the axis, which is going to be that green axis in the middle. And we want four of these. We'll hit OK once we've done that. And there we go. We have the center part of our, the center ring of our lamp shade and the four attachment fins. So if we have a look at the one here, looking very similar so far. So that's where you should be up to now. Make sure you've given it the correct name. You see there, as I patented it, it gave me four of those components, which doesn't matter too much. I could probably get away with only having one if I did it slightly differently, but it's close enough. All right, so center ring and attachment fins. Hope that's worked well for you. See you in the next video.